it's hard to tell, right? I think that we don't have a lot of details about exactly what's happening, why why it's it's happening. Um, I don't think it matters uh, too much. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I try to focus more in like like the real AI uh, building building stuff. But it's really interesting to see that uh, AI is getting so much of the spotlight these days, and, and people are talking so much about these kinds of transactions. But he says that he wants to return OpenAI to this open source yeah. for good initiative. That that's that surely a positive. Amazing. That would be amazing, of course. Like if you could have a company like OpenAI uh, contributing more to. Uh, open science to open source AI, uh, it could have a massive impact in the world, right? We're seeing that with uh, DeepSeek, right? From a relatively small organization, thanks to the power of open source by releasing their weights openly, uh, they've had a massive impact on the world already three weeks after releasing. So if a company like OpenAI could be, the, could be doing the same thing, uh, it would really be impactful for the world. Okay. So you would support an Elon Musk bid on OpenAI? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to know without the details. But uh, anything more open, I would support for sure. Clem, you, you mentioned DeepSeek. Yeah. Uh, just give us a view. It, it really sent shockwaves across the yeah. financial markets for sure. And yeah. certainly, you know, you guys in the, in the AI industry would have been watching this closely as well. Yes. Um, what is your view on how disruptive DeepSeek is or not? What do you think have been the biggest lessons and, and potential changes to the industry after DeepSea. It really caught the attention of the whole community all over the world. Um, the open source weights of DeepSeek R1 have been released on Hugging Face. Uh, and since they've been released, more than a thousand variants have been created from a whole different uh, range of countries, industries, um, customized applications and they've been downloaded over six million times on Hugging Face. Uh, so that now they've become more popular than uh, Llama on Hugging Face, than Flux, than Mistral. Um, by the end of this week, they're going to be the most popular model on Hugging Face. Uh, so, so many people all around the world are now building on top of this open source from DeepSeek. Have you seen any movement away from open AI from Anthropic to DeepSeek at this point, or are they capturing a different part of the market? Capturing a, a different part, uh, I would say that the people who are using APIs are less sophisticated in AI uh, versus the people who are using DeepSeek are more AI builders. Uh, so they know how to run these models on their own infrastructures, they know how to customize them. Um, and I think ultimately uh, these kinds of uh, usage could be 10 times bigger than the users of, uh, of API. Uh, we'll see how it evolves in the next, uh, next few months. And I understand at Hugging Face you were trying to replicate uh, also DeepSeek's R1. Yes. Um, you know, the excitement about DeepSeek was about the efficiency, the yeah. cost. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you tell us about how accurate some of those DeepSeek claims were? Yes, um, so that's the beauty of like open science and open source AI. It empowers anyone to replicate what the original authors have done, right? So in this case, you have a very detailed research paper uh, from uh, DeepSeek uh, that uh, looks like it's holding up, that it's, it's very, uh, very good, very accurate. And then you have the open weights, right, uh, that are released on Hugging Face. Uh, what we're doing with uh, Open R1 is that we're also replicating the data sets uh, and, and kind of like uh, giving more transparency about how this model has been trained. Uh, so it's ongoing. Anyone can join uh, on Hugging Face with Open R1. Uh, and hopefully in the next uh, few days, next few weeks, we've have, we'll have the full open process for everyone no matter their size, because probably the budget is not going to be big, to be able to completely replicate R1 uh, in their infrastructure, on their cons country, for their constraints. So it's going to be amazing. Uh, just in terms of as you're working through this process, any early indications about kind of the efficiency claims of the model and, yes. and actually how good it is? Can you, can you give us any insight into that? Yes, so the, the 6 million number for the training run, the last training run, uh, sounds to be accurate. Um, and in addition to that, uh, the inference cost, uh, which is much lower than most of the other models, also seem to be accurate. Uh, so really, really good gain in terms of efficiency, cost uh, for everyone around the world. And in terms of uh, the infrastructure, because yeah. this again is a, such a big yeah. focus at the moment, you know, yeah. uh, the, the DeepSeek uh, claim to have been able to train uh, its models on, on slightly less advanced NVIDIA chips, those have been, yeah. that have been compliant 
with the US restrictions yeah. um, as well. Do you think that there is a chance, though, that DeepSeek has access to more advanced chips, given what you've seen? Uh, it's an open question. Yeah. Um, for sure, there has been some innovation on the training side. Uh, for example, how they use CUDA uh, that they shared on their research paper, and we've validated that indeed they've done some innovation there. Uh, that they've been working really close to the metal, uh, so really kind of like at the uh, higher uh, side of the of the stack. Uh, so we'll know more in the next uh, next few weeks. But uh, it sounds obvious today that uh, you can do some innovation on the types of chips that, that you use um, and that AI will find ways to make advantage of the current infrastructure that they have, which is good uh, for, the, for the whole field. Because we don't want just a few players who have the best chips to be the only one to be able to build AI. Otherwise, we'll have like very extreme concentration of power. So if you can build AI, train AI on any type of chips, it's going to be better for the world because it's going to give more access for everyone to be at the AI themselves. One of the conversations and themes of this summit is around collaboration between countries, yes, but also competition. Yes. And we yes. know that there is US and China competition in yes. all areas of technology. Yes. And it feels sometimes Europe's kind of caught in the middle. Uh, at Macron, uh, President Macron you know, announced a big infrastructure spend in, in France. Yes. In your view, does Europe have what it takes to compete with the US and China in AI? I think so. I think the climate has really changed over the last few weeks. Maybe it's the power of uh, DeepSeek showing that a uh, relatively small investment fund can compete with the frontier labs in the US. So I'm seeing a lot of ambition from any countries, big and small, not just Europe, not just like a big countries, but really any country to be able to play a part in AI. I think that's what they've realized with, uh, with DeepSeek. I think with, uh, with an open science approach, with a collaborative approach, with an open source AI approach, I think uh, today most countries believe that they can play a part in AI. Um, actually, the interesting thing for me of this summit is that probably the closest thing to a consensus is on openness for, for AI. And that's quite, quite, a, quite a change compared to a year, two years ago, where uh, there was a lot of skepticism around uh, openness. It looks like now uh, most countries, most organizations have realized the power, the capabilities, uh, the economic gains of, uh, of openness in AI. Does, um, what was, was China's progress a shock at all? Uh, in terms of, there was a lot of conversations about, you know, China was still quite far behind the US in terms of these frontier models, etc. Uh, so was, was Deep Sea quite shocking in the sense of uh, trying to highlight China's progress? I don't think too close observers. Yeah. Uh, I predicted last year that uh, AI would be uh, you know, leading or uh, close to leading the AI race yeah. uh, this year. We saw it happening over uh, the past past few years. Uh, in my opinion, thanks to uh, open science, we started to see the numbers of research papers coming from China exploding in the past two, three years. And then we started to see uh, any sorts of organizations in China uh, contribute to open source AI, right? Uh, big technology labs from Alibaba and others, uh, startups, um, unconventional organizations like uh, uh, investment funds like uh, like, Deep, like DeepSeek, and so more and more they contributed to open source AI and created this kind of like cycle of progress for AI to not only catch up but uh, get close to the lead in, in AI. Um, so we were seeing that happening for for quite a while, and that's an interesting kind of like approach that probably any country or any region in the world could uh, could replicate. We're having the Prime Minister of India today at the, at the summit. Uh, I'm sure like uh, India could follow a similar approach to uh, not only catch up in AI, but also play a big part in moving the frontier uh, forward.